Okay, I'm not live. Awesome. Are we are we doing the uh, intro video countdown? Wait, I guess. Hello, hello, good evening, and good uh, aid to those of you uh, who do celebrate this uh, particular uh, coming uh, weekend holiday starting tomorrow. I hope you've all had a good week. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if, you, if you would be so kind as to let us know where you're tuning in from, we'd be so happy to know. Uh, we're trying to keep tracks just so that we can map out where our awesome fans and followers might be might be based. Um, and uh, we'll be sure to recognize that. Mascani Real Estate, thank you for joining. It's Rachel. Gladys Njiru, I see you. Even though Gladys is next <laughs> in the room next door. Uh, Gladys, by the way, is part of the awesome team we have here at Grand Acres. Um, which is why I'm poking fun at her. A hardy group. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you guys deserve an award for consistency. Honestly, uh, I really appreciate your your presence every single week. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, someone's asking uh, who's a handsome man. Uh, use a handsome man. Thank you, uh, whoever you are. I do agree with you. <laughs> uh, only because my mom told me all the time uh, as a little boy. So it got in my head. Uh, I'm, I'm being facetious, but thank you for that uh, kind compliment. Kets, uh, Kets um, Rainia joined. Uh, thank you for, guys, please let us know where you're joining uh, from. Uh, we'd like to, uh, to, to be blessed by that knowledge. Uh, if, if you remember, just say which city, which country, what part of the world, uh, that you're tuning in from. Amy Guy, thank you for tuning in. Thank you all so much. Uh, and if you have friends, loved ones, uh, people you respect and like, only the ones you like, I always stress that, that would benefit from this conversation, please go ahead and share the invitation uh, link with them so they can tune in as well, encourage them, prod them uh, to join. Uh, make comments, ask questions, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, don't be shy to do that. It helps us when you do subscribe because then we can build a meaningful relationship with you for the long term. Uh, so, again, thank you for tuning in. It's now three minutes past seven o'clock. I'll get started. We usually like to stop at exactly 8 p.m. Uh, just to respect all your time uh, for the day. <clears throat> so... We're going to go through about half an hour. Well, now I'll, I'll try and keep it to about 27, 25 minutes. The topic for today is mutation forms. Uh, okay. Uh, if you've followed any of, um, of our channels or consumed any of our content over the last, I don't know, six, seven years, you will have heard me speak about this particular document over and over again the mutation form. So I'll be discussing it today and why it's important for you to be conversant with it. Uh, and then we'll dedicate the last 30 minutes for your questions. I always like to make this as interactive as possible so that I am responding to what's top of mind for you as opposed to deciding for you what you wanna hear about. So just keep that in mind, prepare your questions. If you have them already with you, send them through so that we can queue them and I'll cover as many as I can within the 30 minute period, okay? So here we go. Mutation form, what's a mutation form? Uh, so a mutation form is basically um, a document that uh, was created uh, as part of the policies and procedures uh, for subdivision, amalgamation, anything you do with a piece of land, whether it's a combination, uh, change of boundaries, and so on, and I'll cover those one by one. Um, this 
document has been created as a template by the Ministry of Land Survey Department, okay? So it's, it's a formal document um, that can only be changed or altered by the governing authority, which is Ministry of Lands, uh, Department of Surveys. Uh, and it basically helps you go through the legal processes of changing anything about a piece of land. Hence the term mutation form. Obviously mutation connotes to, to, to mutate, okay, which is to change. So any change uh, would have to go on this. And on that note, mutation forms are used specifically for freehold property. I hope that makes sense, right? Freehold. Uh, leasehold properties are governed under a different document, which is equal to a mutation form uh, for freehold. Uh, and I'll cover those for the leasehold in a later episode or, or session. Maybe next week we can do that. Uh, but just to make that distinction, it's very important. These are very minor technicalities that make or break a transaction. And if you're in the dark about it, you, are, you run a very high risk of being duped or led astray in a very expensive and costly transaction, which is what land uh, purchases and sales are, right? So I'm gonna be very anal about the details. Please uh, excuse that, it's important, it's for your benefit because these are all legal terms. Uh, no word is gonna be uh, used out of place and it'll help you tremendously. So I'm gonna, um, and as I go along, someone from my team will probably uh, project on your screen what I'll be talking about at the time. And again, if you have any questions as we go along, note them down, send them through. I'll try and address them before we're done with today's session. Okay, so um, the example we're gonna use for you today is, is an actual one. It's an actual mutation form, a certified copy of a mutation form. Uh, mutation forms exist in triplicate. Anytime you engage a surveyor to amalgamate or combine uh, different pieces of land into one larger one or subdivide it or make any changes to the, the, the area, uh, the acreage or the specific boundaries or beacon points on a property, uh, the license surveyor, always make sure it's a license surveyor, uh, will use this form. This is what it looks like if you can see that on the screen for those of you on Facebook. Um, this document is super critical. Everything on that form is designed intentionally um, and uh, all your particulars would go on it, right? Uh, it, and this document is created as a result of the Registered Land Act of 1963. Very, <laughs> very important to know. It happens to be the year of our country's independence. So this document and its format uh, over the years originates with our independence. Uh, and it'll always contain the title deed number on page one. So we're looking at page one, it'll have your approximate area and these details should match whatever is on your title deed. Okay, if there's any discrepancy between the reference details on this document and your title deed, that is a red flag. A red flag for a very material error that must be fixed or a red flag for a fraudulent transaction someone's trying to take you for a ride. So you wanna pay attention to every detail. Every word, every placement, every hyphen has to match. Any mismatch would have to be corrected if it's a genuine error because these documents are prepared by fellow human beings and humans are not perfect, so errors do occur. But if an error is not going to be corrected for one reason or another, that's, that's a bigger red flag for me. And, if we can't progress beyond that point, I walk away. It's that simple. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. I have too much respect for my coins, my, my, my shillings, my dollars, uh, whatever resource I'm gonna be using to transact on this property. So very important to note. So make sure you always check the title deed number and the approximate area that it matches your, your title deed. It'll also, uh, have the registered owner of record listed there in the bottom half where you see it says Grand Acres Limited. This is actually the mutation form for one of our uh, projects in Nanyuki, which is in Laikipia County, one of the most beautiful counties in Kenya, uh, East Africa. 
And uh, we use this mutation form to subdivide our mother parcel, which is 19.331 hectares, uh, specifically uh, in acres. And you can use Google. If you, if you just Google uh, hectares to acres, it will pull up the uh, calculation uh, template immediately. Just enter the hectares. It will tell you the equivalent in acres. In this case, it's 47.78 acres. Uh, that we subdivided. It'll also have a PO box number of the registered owner of record. In this case, it's Grand Acres Limited. And any time you have a, a, a business or a company listed as a registered owner uh, on a document, it'll also include the registration certificate number, which is the equivalent of an identification card number, okay, uh, for an individual. So if you see Grand Acres Limited or XYZ Limited, whatever the case may be, it must always be accompanied by the registration, um, the registration number. So for those of you on Instagram, this is, uh, I hope you can see that. This is what page one looks like. Those of you on Facebook, I'm sure you can, you can see that fairly clearly because it's being projected on your screen by, uh, my lovely assistant uh, in the in the back here. Uh, so that's what the mutation form looks like. It'll say mutation form. It'll list the title deed number, the approximate acreage or hectareage, uh, the registered owner of record, the company registration number, as well as a postal address. All those details uh, will help you narrow potential for errors. Okay, so keep keep uh, keep track of that. Now, page two, page two will always have your proposed scheme. Whether you're combining or subdividing, this is what your license surveyor will put up here as the proposed subdivision or mutation, whatever it is. You know, uh, guys like me are used to subdividing as opposed to amalgamating or combining. Uh, but this is where you would put that scheme, whatever you're proposing to the authorities to allow, has to go on here, the draft uh, plan. In this case, you can see the whole 47.78 acre block. Uh, in this case, we, we subdivided the half acre passes of land for residential use. And this was on the tail end of a change of use and subdivision process that we had to go through with the county of Laikipia. Uh, once they issued their approval, uh, the last part of that process is to get your mutation form approved. Okay, so that's what this page illustrates. In, in our case, we went as far as uh, in indicating green zones, areas that we were not going to sell, but we're going to keep in their natural state with greenery and shrubbery and bushes, just to keep a, a green ambience and vibe for the compound, as well as a, a natural waterway there in the bottom half, you can see that. And uh, even uh, maybe even more important than all those details I just described is uh, the signature of the proprietor. In this case, I've already showed you on page one, it lists Grand Acres as a proprietor. And therefore my signature is on there because I happen to be the primary director at Grand Acres. Uh, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Goshen Acquisitions Limited. Okay, that's why my signature is up there. And uh, um, don't try and copy it. It's very difficult to copy. <laughs> Just for those of you who might be uh, uh, thinking in those lines, it'll have the date that I signed it, obviously. And then on page three, it'll have the same document. Uh, only difference is it's going to reference all our neighbors. All our immediate neighbors have to be illustrated on page three for orientation of the government authorities. And this is generally pulled or maybe overlaid over the registry index map, right? Uh, so the difference between a mutation form and a registry index map, and both are very important, is that the mutation form has to do with your specific property only. Whereas the registry index map will reference your property and its relation to the immediate adjacent neighbors, however many they are. Which is why on page three, you will notice that 
our neighbors are, are sort of illustrated. You can see these subdivisions up here. This happened to be another block of uh, half acre parcels that we produced way back in 2015 that we sold out on, right? It'll have the uh, LR numbers or the land registry numbers. It'll show the number of a neighbor here, the number of a neighbor here, the number of a neighbor here, as well as up here, okay? So page three, in contrast to page two, will reference all your immediate neighbors as well, because this helps to triangulate your exact location on the ground as relates to everything else in the neighborhood. Seems like a very simplistic diagram, but super important. Why? Because if these numbers were inaccurate, technically, that would mean that our parcel of land is potentially located somewhere else physically on the ground as, to, as opposed to what we think it is. So you always wanna make sure those details match. Everything, everything on this document means something. Very critical, which is why it drives me bonkers. When people tell me they have bought land because it had a clean title in quotation marks because that's how it was advertised. And yet they have no copy of, certified copy of imitation form or the registry index map. How do you know you've actually bought a physically existing piece of land? You could have bought thin air. This document is, is, is what proves that your piece of land as referenced on the title deed exists physically within the physical boundaries of the Republic of Kenya, as opposed to being virtual or thin air, which happens a lot, unfortunately. So you you forgive me for belaboring this point, but it's super duper critical, okay? Now, if there's any variations on the, on the site, the county surveyor, as they approve or disprove, will make notations there. In this case, it says grand, uh, ground acreage, rather, is slightly less than the title acreage by 0 0.271 hectares. So 0 0.271 hectares is roughly, I'd say, almost one um, and half of an acre, slightly bigger than half of an acre, somewhere between half of an acre and three quarters of an acre. So what that means is that our title deed, acreage reference as contained on page one, which I'll show you again, okay? On page one, um, says 19.331 hectares. What the county surveyor here is saying is that the acreage on the ground is slightly less by 0 0.27. Why is that important? Because it needs to reconcile with every acreage point that we're asking to be approved. Every single one of those subdivisions, if you add all that acreage up, it needs to tally with the actual acreage on the ground. Now, the reason this is not particularly problematic is because mutation forms for freehold properties uh, generally operates under what we call a general boundaries regime in the survey system or survey um, management policies and structures. There are two. One is called general boundaries, the other is called fixed survey. General boundaries have an allowable margin of error for boundary demarcations and acreages, right? So if it falls within that uh, allowable margin of error, it's not considered to be too material and therefore you can, you can shimmy things around and get approvals. If it's beyond the allowable margin of error, then you have to make amendments to the original mutation form, uh, which would precede our approval for subdivision. This is why this document is so important. Under fixed boundaries, fixed boundaries is generally for uh, leasehold properties, which are mostly found in urban zones or urban areas. And those are based on very specific um, GPS coordinates, right? It, it's a fixed point, you know, no matter uh, where in the world, if you enter those coordinates, like you'll find on your Google map, uh, whatever degrees, north, east, southwest, that's what a fixed uh, survey is. 
those are fixed. It doesn't matter who claims where the boundary is. Whatever was printed there is the fixed point. It cannot change. It's tied to a global mapping uh, positioning system. Uh, and that's the difference between general boundaries and fixed surveys. For those of you in Kenya, you will commonly remember, especially in rural parts of Kenya, where our grandparents or parents would show us a boundary of a property, maybe our property and the neighbors in, 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 in upcountry or the countryside. And usually they would mark those with uh, sisal plants or makonge, uh, for those of you who are familiar with that term. This is how boundaries were typically demarcated back in the day because of the allowable margin of error. Uh, hence, the discrepancy between title deed acreage, as illustrated on page one, and the ground acreage, right? So those are things you wanna look out for. And if you're ever in doubt, always, always, hire professionals, licensed professionals. In this case, we're working with a licensed surveyor. You always have to do that even before you buy. I find it's a great idea, if, especially if you're buying in bulk or if it's, a, it's an expensive acquisition, a, an expensive uh, transaction, you wanna invest in whatever it takes to hire a licensed surveyor to confirm the boundaries, sizes, and so on. Because if the, if the, if the, discrepancies or the differences are very material, you may even want to renegotiate your acquisition costs because you're getting either less or more ground than the title deeds reference or the maps reference. And in some cases, if, the, if they are beyond the acceptable margins of error, you literally cannot proceed with that transaction legally and cleanly without making those changes first and have those changes reflected in the government documents. Okay, so... I hope you're tracking along. So that's what page three will have. And it'll have the stamp of your license surveyor who has prepared that. Um, and if approved by the county surveyor, they will assign LR numbers or land registry numbers, land reference numbers. That's what LR stands for. Um, and in this case, because there were 80 of these subdivisions, each one of these is approximately half of an acre. There are too many to list there without making the document look too messy. You can see how fine and detailed that is. Uh, the reason I love working with our surveyor here is because uh, he has those details uh, prepared digitally. A lot of surveyors will do this by hand and it gets messy. Uh, the font is different sizes and so on. This is a quite neat, but still very dense. It's difficult to pack all the necessary details on that document without killing its legibility. So what do they do? They create a schedule listing all your parcels approved for subdivision. If they are too many to fit on page one, I'll show you that real quick again. Like I mentioned before, everything on this form is designed purposely. That's what this table is for is for you to enter all the LR numbers that are ultimately approved by the county surveyor. Okay. Uh, in this case, there's how many boxes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's 18 boxes. So if we were subdividing this block of land into 18 pieces, uh, they would all fit there and it would be no problem. In this case, there's 80 of them, which are too many to fit. And you can't fit more than one reference detail uh, in each box. So what they do is they create an area list as an addendum or an appendix to your, and it, it'll always be stamped as an, this is what a certification looks like. If anyone ever shows you this mutation form without a certification stamp, uh, treat it as garbage. Um, it means nothing. I could have manufactured it. This stamp is what proves that it's an authentic copy of what the government has as an original in their offices. There's only three of them. They are shared between the Ministry of Lands Registry and the survey department, uh, as well as the provi uh, provincial uh, surveyor. Uh, that's what that certification stamp looks like. And I'll just show you real quick Every single page uh, from page one 
is supposed to have that. So make sure every page is stamped. Uh, this is usually an A3 format document. So it will be a single leaf. The originals are a single leaf folded in half, uh, therefore four pages. But if they make a copy for you and they don't have A3 format papers, you'll have four separate sheets, right? That's why we did uh, front and back. Normally it's like, it opens up like a newspaper, right? So make sure the pages are certified if someone is showing you one of these. Otherwise you could be looking at someone's fabrication. For those of you on Instagram, I'm sorry, it's, it's, this is not the best way to, uh, to share this as we go along, but Instagram has figured out a way for us to project like that on, on Facebook. Uh, so again, area list, it will have your proposed plot numbers. They are given letters and numbers. Once they are approved, they are assigned land reference numbers. That's what these are. And their acreages as well. Everything has to match. I hope that makes sense. And because there's 80 of them, this thing went for two pages. Again, you have the certification stamp. This is what a certified copy looks like. And the date that it was certified for you. Signed by the county surveyor. And by the way, if you're wondering how you get that done, very simple. You pay the prescribed fee at the cash office. It's usually 300 shillings for certification for each copy of a certified uh, document that you want to get. And they will issue a receipt that you then present to the county surveyor who then certifies it in his presence, looking at the original so that no one can create false documents and dupe unsuspecting people. Okay, this thing kept going. Therefore, another certification. And finally, page four. Page four will have the signatures of the registered owners of in this case, it's Grand Acres. It says Solomon Wangwe, like I mentioned before. That's my signature. Um, and then this, we get to the most critical part for me here. You see all these uh, details here in the middle section and then at the bottom. The middle is by your license surveyor who stands by the work he has done. Okay. In this case, it's Mr. Edward uh, Kiguru. License surveyor, it says that this guy can be tracked by his license number, uh, which is why he has to sign. And then finally, before your title deeds are produced, you have the Ministry of Lands Registrar. So now it has left, it has left the county surveyor's office being approved and gone to the Ministry of Lands Registrar, who will sign it, endorse it at the bottom, and they'll even have their stamp number as a Ministry of Lands Registrar. And then it goes off to the provincial surveyor who will amend the registry index map based off of the approvals of this mutation form. Because once this is approved, the registry index map has to be changed to illustrate that original block of land, that giant piece of land into the tiny ones. And therefore the registry index map will look exactly like this. And you have closed the loop on having every step of the process of your subdivision or amalgamation or combination uh, illustrated on government documents. Therefore you can be certain that any property that you're looking at that falls within that area actually exists physically within the uh, boundaries of the Republic of Kenya. I hope you guys are tracking along. I know it's a lot. Uh, this is second nature to us because this is what we do on a daily basis. But if you're going to buy land, you want to pay attention to every single one of these details. Make sure it is a certified copy. No, no wiggle room on that. Otherwise, I could I could show you fabricated information for, for nefarious reasons and you don't want to take any chances. And so I hope that has helped. 
Um, if you have any questions about that, send them through. I know many of you will have a ton of questions. In the next session, we'll cover the same document for leasehold, and then we'll also cover the registry index map, which is the final document after this. And uh, the reason I like to make noise about these documents, even though it's not really talked about by those of us who are in the business of marketing land, is because in my humble and experienced opinion, um, in terms of order of importance, more important than your title deed, in fact, because all these documents are what give your title deed strength. So I like to tell people, think of your title deed in the same way that you think of your national ID card, right? When you turn 18 years old in Kenya, you are issued a national identification card if you apply for one. The reason that national identification card can be prepared and issued to you is because you exist in the government's record, first of all, from a birth certificate. Without a birth certificate, you cannot get a national identification card, right? So when people make noise about clean title deed ready in my industry, uh, it, you know, it's it doesn't mean much to me as a practitioner in the industry, because I know more important than the ID is your birth certificate. I could manufacture an ID to say anything about myself, especially if it doesn't match my birth certificate, then it's meaningless. So uh, that's what registry index maps, green cards, and this document, mutation form, are to me. They are the birth certificate that gives credence and weight uh, and trust to a title deed. So if you ever bought land and didn't get any of these documents, please make sure you try and find them. Most of the time, the person who sold you the land just didn't bother to provide you these documents, uh, also because you didn't ask for them. One of the things we do when we're purchasing land, and this is why we put it in our checklist, uh, the Grand Acres Land Buying Checklist, the nine steps to safe land buying in Kenya. If you haven't seen that document and you're keen to, to have a step-by-step -step guide to safe land buying in Kenya, go to our website, www.grandacres.co.ke and look for this document. It's an absolutely free download that we are providing to you, whether or not you buy land from us, have this document with you and make sure you go through every step one after the other without skipping any. And I guarantee you, you will never be conned. You will never purchase something that's um, uh, not legit because it will flag issues along the way that you can either correct or walk away from. And step number seven, when we sign the sale agreement, we've actually listed there, some of the things you have to have listed in your sale agreement as part of your completion documents. These are the documents you absolutely must have before you finish paying for that piece of land or before you allow your lawyer to release your money from the escrow account to your seller. Very important. Escrow account is step number eight, by the way. Um, step number seven, when you're preparing your sale agreement, it lists all the completion documents. That's what these are. For those of you on uh, Instagram, if you can see that, I know it might be appearing backwards, uh, but again, this document is a free download on our website. You can get it for yourself. For those of you on Facebook, I hope you can see what's been projected. And the, uh, the sixth, seventh, the seventh on the list of completion documents is certified copies of the mutation form registry index map duly stamped. You must ask for these from your seller uh, so that you don't go through the hassle of trying to trace them after the fact, because after you're done with the transaction, your seller has absolutely no motivation to get you these documents, especially if you didn't make them as conditions precedent to the closure of your transaction. Make sure you ask for them that way, they can go back and fix any issues before you take legal possession of your property. Otherwise, that mess might be left up to you. And in the worst case, you may have bought a title, a title deed that does not exist on the ground physically. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Very important. If you have any questions, send them through. 
uh, and we'll get into it. Uh, I've gone a little bit over on our time for this presentation, but I just wanted to make sure I went through every single detail. And as a last note on the mutation form, this is a post we actually put up today. The Ministry of Land Survey Department has redesigned the mutation form. Okay, this is what, so I'll show you the, the one I just took you through. This is the old format, mutation form. Okay, and this is the new format, mutation form. It's much cleaner looking in terms of the layout uh, and they've increased room for more, for more details just to make this thing a lot more accurate. And this is on our uh, social media post. It's also on our website as a free download, just as a, as a resource for you to know what the new mutation form is supposed to look like, should you be transacting now going forward, right? So that if someone presents you something that supposedly was created in this period of time uh, and looks like the old one, then you can ask the necessary questions, okay? So just go to our website, download it. It's absolutely free. We also posted on Instagram what the new one looks like. Be familiar with it. It's an important part of your due diligence when you're purchasing land. And even when you're selling, you want to provide this to your buyers. Uh, it's just good sense and good neighborliness and, and, and responsibility, uh, looking out for your brother's and sister's needs and serving people well provide them these documents so that their title deed has proper backing. Should anything ever come up later in the future, they have indisputable proof of the authenticity of their ownership, the size, the acreage, the dimensions, the shape, and who the immediate neighbors are, okay? So moving on, uh, I'll take your questions if you, have, if you have any, otherwise I will just stare at the screen. Uh, endlessly. So send, uh, send your questions through and I'll be happy to answer them over the next 23 minutes. So I'll start with uh, Anthony Mwangi. And my phone's about to, to go off on me. If we can get a charger, uh, that'd be great. Anthony Mwangi says, hey, my mom recently bought two pieces of land in Matu. Matu, I believe, is in Machacos County uh, on Garissa Road between uh, Thika and, uh, I guess, on your way to Kitui. And I don't think that she got a mutation form, but the title deeds are in her name. Should we be worried? Anthony, um, I wouldn't say you should be worried yet. Like I pointed out before, most sellers of property don't even know the importance of having a, a mutation form as part of your records to accompany your title deed. So chances are they simply did not provide you what already exists, okay? So first things first, if you don't have time to go through this yourself, please uh, engage a licensed surveyor who will go to the relevant Department of Survey office with a copy of your title, never give anyone the original title deed, except a lawyer who gives you a receipt that they have received your original title deed. Make a copy of the title deed, your mom's title deeds, send a surveyor or go with it yourself to the relevant Department of Survey office for that area and ask them for a certified copy of the mutation form. If you have a copy of the title, usually they can find the references that lead them to the mutation form. Um, and along with that, ask them to produce for you a certified copy of the registry index map, the RIM or the RIM. Uh, very important. Those two documents are two sides of the same coin. Mutation deals with your specific property. The RIM deals with your entire area. So if you have a mutation form to a property that is not illustrated on a registry index map, that's also a problem. So always get the two and make sure your property or your mom's property is clearly illustrated on both documents, okay? So do that first before you get worried. And then if, they, if there's an issue, they will tell you and also advise you on how to go about fixing it. Um, and hopefully everything goes well. But next time you purchase land, make sure it's contained as a conditions precedent in your sale agreement. 
the list of documents called completion documents that the seller must provide to you before you complete a transaction, including the certified copies of the mutation form and the RIM. Okay, cool. Next question. Uh, next question is from a Hardy group on IG. Hey guys, uh, and, and your question is, good morning, Solomon. Uh, maybe it's just a comment. Good morning, Solomon. It's morning where you are. Um, I guess that's where, East Coast, uh, Del uh, maybe West Coast. Uh, let's say I bought land five years ago and only have the title deeds. Later on, I learn about mutation forms and RIMs and more. How do I go about obtaining these documents? Awesome, I think I just answered that with in, the, in the last question um, about the gentleman whose mom bought property in Batu. Get a license surveyor, provide them a copy of your title deed uh, and send them to the relevant Ministry of Land Survey Department office and they should be able to retrieve those documents for you. Pay the prescribed fee, it should be 300 shillings. They give you a receipt and a duplicate. You keep the original, you present the duplicate to the uh, surveyor and they produce a certification of the copy of the original that they have custody of. Okay, if you have any questions about that, let us know. We'll be happy to help. Okay, next question from Washu. Hey, Washu, um, another faithful follower, uh, participant uh, on our live events. Washu, we love you. Thank you so much. Uh, you and Ahadi and everyone else are the reason we are. Uh, we are rejuvenated by doing what we do. So thank you. And with the new titles, which of the documents, this is Washu's question, with the new titles, which of the documents will be included? Maybe I'm asking too early. So I, I guess you're referring to the title conversion process, which is an ongoing um, effort by the Ministry of Lands, RD Sasa initiative, it's, it's, it's the first step in the digitization of, of the land registry and land purchasing land information management system. Okay, it's called Ardi Sasa. The first thing they did was to institute the title conversion process where the law requires the government of Kenya to unify all the different types and kinds of title deeds that have existed since independence to a unified one, to a single format uh, that is uniform for everyone. It's, an, it's, an, it's a welcome initiative, way overdue if you ask me, but a great thing. And one of the things they're doing uh, is, is phasing out mutation forms, which is why you want to get this right now, okay? One of the uh, things or the results of that title conversion process is the phasing out of mutation forms as reference documents for properties. Why? Because they will go into digital archive and only accessible to the survey department officers, right? From now going forward, when they do title conversions, the only document that will matter or mean anything will be the registry index map. So in answer to your question, Washu, with the new titles, the document that will be most material will be the RIM, which is why you wanna make sure you have uh, updated, accurate mutation forms uh, that produced your title deed, because those are going to go into irretrievable archives. They will not be accessible to you. Strictly speaking, even today, if we amend a registry index map to include our subdivided parcels, this mutation form is not accessible to you. It is an internal reference document for the uh, Department of Survey officers. Usually they'll reference them in fraud cases if a court asks for expert witness and opinions about a case relating to property and that sort of thing. Most of the time, uh, this will be completely inaccessible even now, except that they allow people to get certified copies because registry index maps are hardly ever updated. But now the law requires that the registry index map is a final mapping authority for all properties in Kenya, but the registry index map cannot be amended without a mutation form. Why? Because what gives the uh, 
provincial surveyor authority to amend the registry index map is a forwarding letter from the Ministry of Lands Registrar. Okay, it goes to the provincial surveyor who amends the RIM and actually stamps there. RIM amended. Can you see that? Which is why this document is very important. It is the final step to the amendment of a registry index map. Now, because the RIM is gonna be the final mapping authority, you have to have this thing in good order, which is why I'm bothering to make noise about it today, guys, okay? I'm not doing this because I'm bored or have nothing better to do. I'm doing this because I passionately believe uh, it is a critical process in your land purchasing uh, experience. And if no one has told you before, you need to know and hold anyone who is involved in that process with you accountable so that you do not lose money or set yourself up for problems in the future, especially if you're planning to leave your property to your successors. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Thank you for that question, Washu. That was a good one. Um, I'll tackle another question. Um, the listing agent 254 on IG, your question or comment says, kindly expound on the green card uh, slash title deeds. Okay, I've sort of alluded to this already. A green card is equivalent to a birth certificate. Okay. Um, the birth certificate is, is the first uh, proof of your existence in government records. Without a birth certificate, you cannot get a national ID card. You cannot get a passport. Uh, you can't even be admitted to school in some cases. Um, you can't apply for jobs. Uh, in some cases, especially government jobs or uh, political sort of jobs, these are very important because it's a root of everything. Everything is, is born out of the birth certificate. This is what a green card is to a title deed. A title deed means absolutely nothing if it does not have a corresponding green card to it because a green card is what gives birth to a title deed. I hope that's clear, guys. Now, I've said, I've said this before that when we do searches on properties, when we're doing our due diligence, it's common for people to do simple searches, Ministry of Lands, and they tell you the status of a property, who the owner is, is there any loan on it, is it charged to a bank, is there uh, an issue with the title, whatever the case may be. Now, when the Ministry of Lands gives you a search report, what they do is they go to their archives, they pull out the property file, and look at the green card. Whatever the green card says is what they put on your search report, right? So you can hopefully immediately see how important the green card is. It is the single source of reference for everything pertaining to that particular title deed. So it's super critical when you do a search. Also ask your license advocate to ask the registry for a certified copy of the green card so that you can match the details on the actual green card with what the search report said. And so this is, uh, this is how the green card relates to a title deed. It is more important than your title deed. In my view, it is number one, most important document in a land transaction is a green card. Number two is a registry index map along with a mutation form and number four, is your title deed. That's how useless a title deed is to a large transaction. There's a lot more important documents. I actually did a video once, I got into trouble for it, and it was entitled, Why the Title Deed is the Most Useless Document in a Land Transaction. Okay, I'm not saying it's a useless document. I'm saying in the context of everything else uh, that has to do with a property, it is the it's the least important. Green card is number one, registry index map is number two, mutation form along with it, and then the title deed, because all these first three documents are what give your title deed the base to exist. I hope that helps. Next question. Okay. Uh, Miss Nyash, uh, boy, that's, a, that's an interesting name. <laughs> 
3 Miss Nyash on IG. Hello, Solomon. I love the YouTube videos since I discovered it in 2021. What due diligence can I do when buying a land that has allotment number? Um, that's, that's a good question, Nyash. My, my advice to people in the past is avoid transacting with properties that do not have title deeds. Allotment numbers are typically issued by private entities, usually land buying groups, who will pool money from several people to purchase a giant block of land with an intention to eventually subdivide it to the various uh, contributors to its purchase. Uh, in the interim, because it's a costly uh, process to survey, do mutation forms and propose a scheme that would be approved and then amend a registry index map before you produce individual titles, a lot of land buying groups will as a way of receipting your, your purchase or investment, issue an allotment uh, number or a allotment certificate uh, or share certificate. I, I know a lot of times counties will also issue allotments, but in my view, I'd rather deal with a county allotment than a private company's allotment because a county allotment has mechanisms for accountability. Uh, even though it's not ideal, if you own a property that's on a county allotment letter, do everything you can to convert that into a title deed. Um, a lot of times it's done in bulk because, like I've said, it's a costly and time-consuming process. So a lot of times they'll issue allotment numbers or allotment letters to formalize your ownership of a piece of that giant piece of land that is yet to be subdivided or get individual title deeds. It's virtually impossible to do a search on those because you have to ask the private directors of that private entity to disclose certain information, in which case you're relying purely on the goodwill uh, of other human beings. And history has proven this out a million times before. People always get burnt, greed sets in, corruption. People get the same allotment numbers three, four, five times and then eventually you have multiple people fighting for the same property because the private managers of that registry uh, don't keep proper records, either due to human error or just greed, corruption, whatever the case may be. So as a general rule of thumb, I stay away from any property that does not have a government issued title deed or certificate of title. Uh, and this would be my honest uh, answer to you. Uh, if it has an allotment letter uh, if, and you can't turn it into a title deed immediately, avoid it at all costs. Okay, listing agent 254-9G, my parents hold an allotment letter from the council. What's the process of transitioning to a title deed or leasehold? That's an awesome question, listing agent 254. I am actually going through that process myself for the first time ever. Uh, I, I just received a wonderful blessing of an inheritance from my dad uh, of a piece of land in my shags in Webuye town, Western Kenya. Uh, uh, this is for a commercial uh, plot of land that my grandfather actually acquired way before I, I was even an idea in my, in my dad's mind. And it got passed on to my dad and my dad has blessed me with that for an inheritance and I'm now taking the steps to convert that into a title deed. Uh, so listing agent 254, uh, if you would indulge me because I have never done that before, I don't wanna do guesswork. I will get in touch with you directly and keep you appraised of my process as I do it myself for the first time. And once I'm done with that process, I'll probably do one of these sessions and discuss that in detail having gone through it myself, and I'll show you the actual documents. Cool? All right, it's now 7.54. We have six minutes left. Uh, I'll cover one or two more questions. Kennedy Odiambo, hi, so low. What's, uh, what happens if, God forbid, the seller passes away before the conversion of ownership prior to finalizing the deal and having put down a deposit? My question pertains to purchasing uh, agreements, which are mostly carried uh, carried out in the countryside. Let's assume I'm not a resident. Kennedy, good to receive your question. Uh, so God forbid your seller passes away 
before transfer of ownership, which is what I believe you mean by conversion of ownership. Um, that's, a, that's a complicated process because it immediately freezes uh, the transaction. The person who has passed away, if they had not given or signed over a power of attorney to someone else before they died, means that that transaction or that family or that estate has to go through what we call succession. Succession is a legal uh, process for handling the properties, the estates of deceased persons, which would then appoint a person with the authority to transact on behalf of the deceased so that transactions can be completed. In Kenya, that generally takes 12 months to go through the court system to get letters of administration to be issued by a court order or by a, a court of competent jurisdiction, as our learned friends like to tell us. I feel like I should get an honorary degree in law at this point, honestly. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, how much this entire process is regulated by law. This is a legal process, which is why you can't afford any shortcuts. And as, as discouraging as it might sound that you might have to wait X number of months or longer for a court to issue letters of administration, appointing someone the authority to complete transactions or to transact afresh on behalf of a deceased person, that is just the way it has to be. And so that, that's what happens. You have to wait for succession to be done, letters of administration issued, powers of attorney signed, whatever the case may be, and then you can complete the transfer of the property. Now, hopefully, God forbid again, hopefully, uh, if the person uh, gets raptured to heaven before uh, all the rest of us, but they have signed all the transfer forms. You got letters of approval, letters of consent from the land control board or the consent letters from RV house. You have spousal consents and all that jazz and they signed them before they died, then you're good to go. Otherwise it's pause, deal with succession through the courts and then come back and complete. As always work with licensed advocates to help you it's a murky territory or field to try and do on your own, especially if you're not in Kenya. So engage licensed advocates. And there are those who suspect, uh, who uh, specialize in succession law. Engage one to help you complete that process so that you can get possession of your property. Cool. We have time for one more question. <clears throat> and this is from uh, RHE Becca, Rebecca. Uh, RHE under, underscore Becca, thank you for your question. And the question is, what happens if a title gets lost, steps to replace? Uh, that's an awesome question. I actually did a video about this a few months ago. So uh, Rebecca, if you would just go back to our social media, uh, Instagram, YouTube. I did post a short video on the steps to take to replace a lost title deed. Okay, first step is you need to go to your closest police station where you believe you lost the title and report to the police and ask them to provide you an abstract, a police abstract. You'll have to record a statement providing the details um, or the circumstances through which or under which you believe the title you got lost and they'll issue an abstract. Hopefully you kept a copy of the title because they will require one from you. Okay, if you don't have a copy of the title, make that your first business. But assuming you do have a copy of the lost title, go to the police station, get a police abstract. Once you've done that, go to a licensed advocate of the High Court of Kenya, preferably one who specializes in property transactions. Conveyancing is, is a technical term. And uh, ask them to initiate the gazettement process because you have to publish in the dailies for a, a period of time, I think it's 60 days, that this such and such a title deed has been lost and you, you will be seeking its replacement. It has to be gazetted for a specific period of time, pay the, the necessary fees. After that gazettement period is done, you will then go to the land control board. If it's a freehold property, you'll go to the land control board with your gazette notice, your police abstract, copy of the title, your application form to the land board, 
and ask them to provide you permission or consent to have the title deed replaced. Once you have the consent letter from the land control board, you then submit all those documents to the Ministry of Lands Registrar for your area, and they will go ahead to replace your lost title deed. I hope that helps. Again, I am not a lawyer. I know I talk a lot about legal processes because that's just how property transactions are done, but I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I, this is why I'm always screaming and, and repeating. Engage the services of a licensed advocate of the High Court of Kenya to help you. Don't try and do it on your own. There's a reason those people went to school for four years, did pupillage for two years, went back to sit the bar exam and got admitted to the bar and have practice for however long they've practiced. Don't try and take shortcuts, guys. This is a very um, technical process. It's not rocket science, but there are people uh, who are specialized in doing this, avoid problems, and if they're not licensed, run away from them. Ask them for their current license. They have to renew it every single year to practice. So ask them to provide you one before you give them the job and let them guide you through the process. And as I've said already, that video is on our socials. Uh, and if you have any specific questions beyond that, feel free to reach out to us uh, on WhatsApp directly, 7 one Again, that's 7 one And I'll be happy to engage with you directly uh, and help you navigate that if I can. Again, our website, www.grandacres.co.ke. If you or a loved one or a friend, family member are looking to make safe investments in Kenya, check out what we have. We are land sellers. We only sell what we own. We are not agents or brokers. If it's not registered in our name, you will never hear about it from us. Why? Because we need to stand behind the documents that give you legitimate safe ownership that you can pass on to your future generations and that we can be held accountable to. So check out our website if you're interested in any of our inventory, reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to engage you. Otherwise, thank you all for joining uh, this uh, weekly live. I look forward to next week's. We will share the topic for next week. It's now two minutes past eight and I will wish you all a lovely day if you're out in the west coast of the US starting your day and a beautiful night for those of you who are here with me or those of you who are in, uh, in the Middle East and ahead. And uh, have a grand time, guys. Cheers. Nasitoki bila kitu mwanangu azaliwe na kakitu usitoke bila kitu aye kila siku naishi kama sina kitu mishowe mimiwe na kakitu akisitoke bila kitu i wanna be my own with you i'm falling on my own with you and i could be anywhere